The horde of cavalry comes out of the gates of Tarsus, followed by infantry of Numidia. What's up guys and welcome back, we're here with another Rome 2 siege for you today, and this is a great 4v4 siege battle for you today, between uh, myself and some subs and some uh, randoms over here on the attacking side. So if you would, we organised a, a few sieges on the Discord, if you'd like to take part in some Rome 2 sieges of your own, then... Do join the Discord down below in the description. All are welcome. But yeah, as you can see straight away, we have uh, Saba, Nabatea, Athens, who I'm being, who I am playing as, and uh, well, Mercedes the New India, um, marching out and attacking Seleucids. This siege has literally everything in it. It has a huge sallies. It has a last stand. It has a very, very close ending, and I definitely recommend checking it out. But yeah, as you can see here, Port Seleucid is about to get surrounded by cavalry. We have Numidia, Nabatea, Athens, and Saba all here. And he's already getting ready his new box over here. And I mean, I say it's a new box, but it is kind of his only sanctuary at this point. There is not many ways he's uh, going to get out of this. He's got Silver Shield swords, Thorax, Shield Bearers, all sorts ready to defend. And uh, as you can see here, the Thorax are going to get a charge in the rear from the Hippias Lancers of Athens. And they turn the face, and I think it was a pretty poor charge in there. I think they got uh, held up on like these couple over here, these stragglers. That kind of saved them. Okay, here we go, we've got Arabian Cav coming in, General Raw Marib Cavalry. But yeah, we have two Kush armies as well, I just like to add. And we have a Roman army all uh, facing down our four uh, defending armies, which obviously Tarsus is quite a good uh, map. He's got. This huge ledge over here, this huge cliff, which you can put a lot of archers on, which you should definitely uh, utilize if you're playing as the defenders on this map. But um, yes, the remaining of our forces are now defending this area at the back here. Um, because, well, we're outnumbered due to uh, most of our forces being out here, literally surrounding the Seleucids. We're going to take our one army and then try and make it a 4v3 almost. Though we will lose a lot, probably, in uh, assaulting this little box of, uh, well, heavily armoured troops, put it like that. It is, uh, they've got some cavalry, but most of their army is infantry. No surprise. And here you go. The general is about to get charged by the Arabian Cav here. Going to get a charge off. Some Javis thrown in. And uh, the Arabian Cav pulling away. He's going to try and lure out the general. And it sort of worked, but sort of didn't. Another Arabian Cav goes in to try and do the exact same thing. General losing a few men, but not many. The target should really be to take out this general, if possible, from a Seleucid, because then they'll make this new box well. They won't stand as long, put it like that, and you'll save lives. But as you can see over here, Kush and Rome taking their time. They don't realize that the city's mainly abandoned. They're going to walk into an abandoned city, and, uh, well, yeah, they're going to be in for a bit of surprise. Got lots of Praetorians. Lots of, well, yeah, lots of Praetorians, really. Uh, I think there's Fos oh, gladiators, triarii, elephants by, uh, we have elephants from Rome, and we have more cavalry, because they were expecting a sally. I think the uh, reason that the Seleucid was chosen, because it was, he was less catered for dealing with this attack, basically. Uh, Kush, obviously, Kush and Rome, two very strong factions, and Seleucid being on the edge as well, uh, kind of isolated himself to do this. So it's a shame, obviously, that the Seleucid player is going to get taken out like this, possibly. But, uh... It's a kind of a, a learning curve, I guess. It's just... Well, I don't know really what the learning curve is. He's just unlucky, really. Uh, Seleucid is a strong faction to play as, but out of these other three, you just would take out Seleucid rather than the other ones. But as you can see here, we've got Mercedes now sending in his legionnaires, his cohorts, and he's, uh... Gonna be fighting out against Silver Shields by the looks of it. So, hope you guys have been enjoying the content at the moment. If you have been enjoying it, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment to show your support. Uh, I just, we've recently hit 1,700 subs. I forgot to mention in like the past video, um, but we recently made it to 1,700 subs, and I can't thank you guys enough for. Uh, well, get me to that landmark, and uh, like I said, let's roll on to 1800 and then 2000, I think. We can obviously, we can get there, guys, but I'm pretty sure in no time at all. So, yeah, just keep up the like, subscribe if you're new, and are enjoying the content. And the Citizen Cav over here, 
Uh, basically been routed by uh, Numidian Riders now and goes to Navate and Royal Cavalry. This is a bit brave and a bit foolish. Don't send Cavalry into this block of Thorax Swords. It's a bit dangerous. I mean, we've got Cavalry, uh, Camelry over here, I should say. Not not even Cavalry. Camelry. And they're Cataphracts. And they're nearly broken through these Silver Shield Swords here. Um, they basically have got inside the line. They could probably, uh, probably get through and just start doing a lot of damage to the Archers. But, I mean, the General here getting... Actually, he's not even being picked off. Um, I'm pretty sure I gave orders to the uh, new meeting guy with his uh, Javis just to basically focus on the general because Javis are really really good against uh, well horse units but yeah you can see here, these two thorax units uh, did not make it very far they were the last two to try and make it to this square and we uh, picked them off with our hippius lancers and royal marib cav but yes yeah, so, I mean this is how the battle starts really and there you go look at that we've only been gone like a minute and this general unit was at 74 it's now down to 36 men it's just getting jabby to death jeez there you go all the jabbies coming in that's a that's an epic front line there i mean the the uh, grey and the gold or the yellow of Mesesli and then you've got the red and the uh, light blue white of uh, the Seleucids. Looks awesome. It really does. And it already looks like their Javis have run out of ammo which is not a good sign. These new... Oh no, maybe not. They just uh, got a bit too close. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, they've got some more that are even closer as well. The general here still getting shot at. I don't know if he's dead. He has recently died. The general for Sluices has died. I mean, no surprise there. 23 units uh, or men left. No surprise there. I'd now, uh, I think the Javis are now throwing into the back of this unit all the way over here. And this unit is uh, getting just Javi to death in the back. And that's a real, real shame. The archers here, it's just a matter of time before they break through and uh, kill these men off. I actually can see here, Nabate has broken through with a few cavalry units. He has, in fact, got through. You just see, like, rideless horses everywhere. And it does look like Kush and Rome are now inside the city. They are taking the city, obviously, quite easily because we're not defending it. Or not defending this part, anyway. And the Praetorians just march through. Elephants are inside, flattening their own men. They'll get up. No worries there. But, I mean, this is going to be a key area. Um, the... Mercedes player, not yet, mate, they haven't moved yet, but Will me did mention later in the battle, and um, we should hold here, um, or like at least here, so we can hold on to this gate, because this is the only gate that we're going to be able to hold um, to allow our uh, forces to get back inside, because this gate will lose to Kush, and we've lost that one to Kush already, and Rome is already taking this one over in that corner, and there's, I think there's another one over here. Might be wrong. No, there isn't. It is uh, just this one here that Rome's going through. So yeah, we're going to lose three of the gates that uh, we've you like the to the enemy. So we need to hold on to this fourth one. So uh, yeah, we're going to soon. I think Sabo will soon move troops up there to hold that hill, or that slope, and that is going to be our one of our outposts, one of our vanguard positions that we'll hold. But until that happens, let's enjoy. The glorious uh, cohorts of Numidia cut down a Seleucid general. Or what's left of the general. His bodyguard. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's not much they could have done. I mean, they certainly did the right thing in uh, not standing in a line and trying to hold back these guys. Because the cavalry just got around and surrounded them. And I mean, they're in now. The cavalry is very much and there's a big gap here. Uh, which the cavalry can go through. And there you go. I think the New Median Riders have realised that. And they're going to charge into the side of these silver shields. And out of the gloom, of, uh, not out of the gloom, out of the bushes, come the uh, Riders. I mean, they're a medium shock uh, cavalry unit. They're not, like, heavy, heavy. So I don't know how much damage they'll actually do. But, I mean, these silver shields here might want to try and retake that gap, though. I mean, this whole area here is a bit of a mess now. The Nabataeans have broken through with their cataphracts. And with the support of the infantry, yeah, I mean, the, this side's completely lost now. The infantry is very much in. And the Seleucids are basically done. At this point, 
Me and Sab had decided to send over a few units because we realised Rome's general is all the way out here on his own. He's not been moved. The rest of the main army has been moved. But he's not actually moved his general. So we were like, well, could we get some uh, units over there? Could we go and take him out, possibly? And that's what we're going to try and do. We're going to try and send over my hippie Lancer, which is exhausted at this point. Some Arabian Cav. And I think some more Arabian Cav. And I mean, look at this. Kush is just desperately trying to get the rest of his stuff in. He just keeps seeing the cavalry coming over. It's like, oh, quick, run, run. I mean, this is two Kushite armies. This is a huge, huge deadly force here. And there you go. Rome realizes what's happening. And he sends his general to join it, link up with his main force. And there you go. Saber is now starting to go and take this hill because he sees Rome is also going to contest for it. We already have some Praetorian Guard going up there. And Saber's also ready to, get to go and defend this choke point here. More Praetorian Guard getting ready. Saber looks like he's going to be the front line. He's going to put his Royal Marib uh, spears into the line. Or Royal Marib uh, Guard, I should say. They are a spear unit. But look at this. Kush sends his general really far up. I guess there's a scouting force to kind of see where we all are. And we just shoot him to pieces here. The uh, units should start to drop very, very soon. Like this whole artillery uh, battery almost of uh, archers here. Just unleashing itself. And they're charging to spears. So, I mean, that's never going to end well. And then they send up some uh, Sokia equites. But, I mean, we're not interested in them. We're going to cut down as many of these uh, Royal Kushai as they come by. And they're already down to 60. Could we take out the general here? That would be really, really good. That will be another general down already. And that's in an army that we've not even touched yet. But, I mean, we're, getting, we're desperately trying to shoot him. Every single shot. 36, 34. Surely we can take him out. But no. He gets away. 33 men basically left. It looks like he might lo lose a few more. Yeah, 32. He just shot that guy. That poor guy to death. Um, but, yes, I mean, there is a lot of stuff up here. Like, there's an artillery piece up there. There's archers up here. There is a lot and lots of men. These are Royal Nabataean archers. We've got Cretans up here. Rhodians up here. We've got an artillery police. This is like a strong, strong point now. We don't even need to really worry about this fight. We could probably leave one unit here and like all these archers and artillery is just going to deal with any threats here. Um, or in time, but we will need to limit our archers because, well, we don't want to just shoot all into the first unit, kill that, and because then there's plenty more armored show tills to come. Plenty more indeed. And there you go, the infantry engagement has begun. The uh, Seleucids are just about still alive. They've got a t few tiny units left. Oh. Don't know why there's lag there all of a sudden. I do apologize. Um, but yeah, so the Seleucids are still alive, but only just. And now the Praetorians are now doing what they do best and uh, cutting through these men. But yeah, this Royal Marib unit. Oh, this isn't even Royal Marib. This is a Caravan Guard. So it's one of the cheap spear units. Yeah, no surprise they didn't stand then. But we've got uh, Thorax Swords now. Of Athens joining the front line. And they're going to come and help. But yeah, those caravan guards are already gone. They were just not going to do any good work there. And there they go. They're gone. And it's now the Thorax uh, swords. They're going to be holding the front line. They should do a little bit better. These guys should be able to... Uh, well... Hold their own for a little bit. These are very heavy themselves. And then we've got more Marib Guard joining the front wall. The first unit Marib Guard. And there's an artillery shot. Who was that by? That was just about hitting their, uh, the Praetorians. It's from the African Onager of Numidia. Or Masaisley. That one was short. Uh, and that one's actually killed quite a lot of... Oh, that's killed quite a few Marib Guard. Yeah, they need to be careful with their ar artillery the Onager there. Because they don't want to get too much friendly fire. Because they do a lot of morale damage. And they really want to save it for close shots. And this is a bit of a blob of Praetorians, but it's not the greatest of blobs. We could probably take these units all out. And the cavalry for Numidia is back. So that's uh, available to do. So Rome is now also throwing in stuff over here. More Praetorians. And it's the same combination of uh, Thorax Swords and Marib Royal Guard down here. And these guys are losing. Jeez, it's the most expensive unit that, Ma that Saba can bring. And it's losing. There you go. You can see very easy to tell the difference. You've got the green of uh, Sava and the purple and red of Rome. The imperial purple. Very, very elite color. I'm pretty sure they had to get it through like uh, oysters or something like that. I can't remember. It was like something like that. It's some sea urchin or something weird like that. It might be sea urchins. I don't know. I can't remember. It's not <laughs> really the forefront of my mind, that little fact. 
little nugget of fact. Um, but yeah, I mean, same over here. We've got Royal Maragard holding up a lot of Praetorians. I mean, they could flank around here, could the defenders. I mean, there's not a lot here. I mean, Kush is now starting to send stuff up. Um, but they could flank around and do some damage to these guys. They'll certainly get... I mean, they're trying to get the Javis off here with the Nabataean Axe Warriors, so you can tell. Trying to shoot into the side. And, I mean, there you go. The Praetorians are going to fall back. What is firing? Ah, it's the Onager again. Is it the same Onager? Does look like it might be the same Onager. Firing of a volley. It might have been... I don't know. I don't know whose it was. It was a, an Onager. I think there's three Onagers on the battlefield. There's an Eastern one over here. Um, well, there's two Eastern ones. Um, there's a Nabataean one and a Saba one. And then there's a Numidian one. I, I, as Athens, was the only one not to bring an Onager. And I was the only one that really brought us a full infantry army. Everyone else brought a lot of cavalry or a fair contingent of them. And here we go, Kush's first action, apart from his general going up in a suicidal charge. Or a near suicidal charge, I should say. And there we go. Saber is now engaged. Two desert factions battling out. Who will win in the Battle of the Desert? I'm going to go with Kush. Kush is just so strong. But yes, this is a, certainly a long one. If you've not got your snacks and drinks, I fully uh, encourage you to go and pause. Pause the video. Go and get some snacks and drink. Strap yourselves in because this is a really, really good siege. And you can see here, I mean, Kush is taking his time. He's merry old time in uh, getting ready to support Rome. And Rome's really spreading out his force. He's got like Praetorians over here. He's got... He's actually just basic Praetorians as well. I didn't even realise. Um, but yeah, he's really spreading his force out. Obviously, he's brought a lot of elite troops. But he's actually been forced back here. He's uh, been... He said his nose pretty bloodied up here. He's lost... Uh, these units have lost a lot more than uh, these Thorax swords which got sent in. And this was a very good spot for us. And we decided to push forward to see if we could... Uh, try and catch these units. But we decided no. And it's kind of a bit of cat and mouse over this uh, slope for quite a while. And here you go. It's going to be the same on this side as well. Rome just realizing he's probably gone in a little bit too early. A bit too quickly. And uh, the Javis here are probably they're going to try and set up retreat maybe for Javis. And there you go. I do warn like no Saba pull back. He's trying to lure, lure us into like a trap. They're trying to get us in this courtyard to flank us. Do some damage instead of fighting us in this choke point. And at this point... I realized that we're going to need a rear guard, and I become the rear guard with my thorax to allow the Marib to get back. And look at that, this juking out here, these two. Who's going to win this fight? No one. No one. They've just, it's a draw. And there goes the Javi. It's not going to be a Javi engagement from both sides. And uh, I think I've tried to form shield wall here or something. I don't know, but it's a bit of a mess. It allows a few... Thorax gets shot up. They're really blobbing up and uh, in they go. It's going to be another engagement here in this choke point. And I think the Marib, uh, yeah, the Marib Guard's coming forward again. So we're like, right, the winning combination. And then they're going to fall back again. They just, uh, when the Marib Royal Guard comes in, they're pretty scared. They uh, don't want it. They, they don't fancy it. And there you go. The Marib Royal Guard just holds the ground. And already on this side, Kush is like destroying uh, the Royal Guard and Sabers here. So pick top plates being set in by myself. And these guys are going to have to hold it, hold the line. Imagine, I've just realized, if you could fight through that little building there. You can see right the way through. You can see all the Javis that are firing off down there. That would be really cool if you could fight down like in these buildings. Have a bit of house to house fighting. As you can see here, there's a bit of a stalemate going on. Kush has just been javying these uh, Marib Royal Guard. He's now going to charge in, I think. But we're getting ready with our own javies. We've got Navate and Axe Warriors here. Ready. Firing as they come around the corner. Throwing their javies. Taking out a few of these guys. Another volley. Oh, they're also throwing some more volleys. Oh, that's going to be brutal. This unit's already like lost 40 men, almost. No, more like 30. And there they go. Sab was like, right, we're not having any more of that. We're going to go in. And it's probably the best idea. I mean, there you go. I mean, then there's some sort of confusion. They then decide to just stay in. It's probably the best move they can do. They don't want to get jabby there. There's plenty of defensing here. Defensive here. 
Oh, defenses. There we go. Defense. I just like went through every version of defense there. Um, but yeah, I mean, most of the army now is back. Numidia has nearly brought his entire army back inside. And I think most of his is going to be dedicated to his right flank, which is really pretty thin on the ground for us. We're holding it this like slope. And like here, we've only got about six units combined. I mean, sava has got a lot of his archers back here, but his archers aren't great. They're pretty trash. Um, so we'll have to see whether the attackers really like suck a punch up here and really try to break through because this is a a bit of a soft underbelly for us as this area here but not that we really r realize at this point and we're going to send more troops in we're going to send the royal guard back in in the thorax i mean spears on the offensive aren't great um but i mean marib's not or oh, not marib Saba's not brought much brought much brought much more jeez Words are hard. But with the Thorax support, those spears should do just fine. I mean, and now there's a threat for this Royal Guard to flank around here. There is a gap here, and Rome's realised. Rome's realised what's going on, and he's going to try and fall back. But we're not going to allow him. We're going to try and cut down these Praetorians as they run away. And uh, we've now got three units on the offensive here. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot that we could do here. And at this point, we see this uh, we go well. We've got a lot of cavalry still. We could probably go and take out these elephants, which have been left outside almost as a flank. I think kind of to... I don't know what they were really going to do with them there. But we were like, right, let's mobilize all our Hippias, all of our remaining camels and cataphracts, and let's send them in to try and take out these elephants. Because it's a big win if we can take those elephants out before they attack our infantry. It's fine if our, our cavalry's done the job it's needed to do. It's taken out Seleucids. It's not really got much of a job left it can do inside the city. So we were like, right, take out the elephants. But yeah, these Praetorians are now losing. So that's a big win there for Saba. On other fronts, it's not looking so great. Um, Ma yeah, the Marib Royal Guard losing here. I mean, there's some Navitaean Axe Warriors ready to go in. On this side... Uh, well, we just shot everything that's come down. It was, like more armor shows have died. You can see lots of them dead here as well. Everything that's just getting shot, like these Shota warriors now getting shot uh, by Navitaer and Athens. As Saba holds the line, it's like a look at the teamwork that's going on here. We've got three different factions all working together to just try and kill this one off. And we're using minimal ammo. We're just doing enough damage that, like, numerically, Saba has the advantage. And also, like, the unit is then losing decisively. Yeah, I mean, they're already down to... What are they down to now? 73. That's more than enough damage done. And now they're going to set up some archers. And, well, I'm more than happy to shoot his archers if he's going to bring them up. We've got Kushite archers coming up. A fairly good unit. I mean, look at their longbows that they've got. They remind me, like, the elven bows of, like, uh, Lothlorien. And, yeah, these archers are now coming up. And they're going to try and, on their own, take on... About four or five units of archers. And uh, that's not going to end well. They've already lost a couple of men. And yeah, you, I mean, let's just get rid of the shrubbery for a moment. Have some weird... Look, this is the angle they're trying to fire at. They cannot see the enemy. And all they see is arrows coming over their head. There's literally like... There must be like a spotter. And they're just like, Kushite archers! At your 12 o'clock. And they just fire. And... Just to hit. They're just hitting so many. And there you go. Just like that. That Kushite unit's gone. That Archer unit's basically redundant now. We don't need to really shoot this anymore. It's down to 30 odd men. Yep. Broken. Dead. Gone. I mean they've got plenty more though. They have plenty more archers. They've got plenty of everything. Gonna have to take out some Kushite generals. or something like that. But we will see. We will see what we can do. And uh, I think at this point... Yeah, Numidia's back inside the walls. He's uh, just kind of spreading out his forces again. And the elephants ran back inside. Uh, I forgot to mention. I don't know where they are now. Um, yeah, there they are. They're actually coming to the, close to the front lines. Not in reserves like the rest of his troops. But uh, yes, they might be used quite soon. And now we have a combined force here. Of Kush and Rome going through. This is probably the most deadly combination. You ever see? I hate it when 
uh, players just play as Cushion Roam. I mean, I prefer a bit of a variation. Most of my games end up like I play online fairly, I'd say fairly regularly. And most of the time you see Cushion Roam nine times out of ten in a siege battle. And it's a bit of a shame. I, don't li I like to see more variation. I mean, it makes it a challenge every single time. It does make it a challenge to fight it. But you know just exactly what units they're bringing. Um, obviously, we're playing on like, uh, all, well, custom funds at the moment. It's like 20,000. And so, I mean, Rome just brings lots of Praetorians. And they're bringing lots of uh, Shorts of Warriors. But, I mean, you could, like, 20,000 allows you to bring, like, other factions. Uh, like, like top, top units. Like, for instance, Seleucids. I know they're long gone now. But they can bring, like, a lot of their top tier stuff. And that's... And they have a lot more variety, say, in roster than uh, in top tier stuff than, say, like, Rome. Rome's just got his Praetorians at, like, the top, top tier. Maybe, like, his first cohort. Um, and everything else. I mean, he's, all his units are top tier. But there's, like, different levels and different stages. And, like, with this amount of money, you just bring Praetorians. I mean, they did bring some Gladiators and Triarii, which I'm kind of surprised. And Elephants, which I... I guess that's slightly different because usually most players would just bring Praetorians and nothing else and maybe some archers. So I guess it's nice to see the elephants, but uh... And Kush, I mean obviously with Kush you're just going to see Armour Show to Warriors. They have very little variation in what you bring. You'll probably bring some so Show to Warriors, some Armour Show to... Maybe some Pikes. And I mean you can see these Show to Warriors are just no match to uh... The Thorax Swords with the support of the Archers. And then we've got Maribor Guard in here as well. Doing their best, taking out men. But I mean... Oh! Kush is trying to get through here. Kush is going to get through here. Well seen by Kush here. But he's just going to get jabbed by an... Axe Warriors, and, that, and then we've got a unit of Mercenary Marib Guard. That's a very different unit. That's a heavy unit compared to very heavy. So I don't know why they're ever so slightly worse. I don't know really why that's the case, these Mercenaries. But I mean, they also are armored different. They've got more gold armor. But yeah, they're now going to try and go into the back of the pick top plates here. And they're going to get surrounded by these uh, Marib and Nabataean forces, or Sabah and Nabataean forces. They're going to get cut down, and here we go. We've got all three, or three of the desert factions here. I, mean, I forget that Masesi is actually a desert faction as well. And, I mean, yeah, that Shotal unit is just going to get, or Armour Shotal Warrior, is going to get cut down and killed. Even they can't survive being surrounded on all fronts. And there you go, losing decisively. And that one's using, losing decisively as well. So we're going to beat off this attack here. So that's excellent. And the elephants are in. The elephants have gone in. They did actually just go into the front line very soon after. Um, like getting chased back in off the wall. Like outside the walls. I mean. It's not the greatest charge they can do. They're not very armoured either. So you need to get like. If you're going to use them. You've got to use them like. It's almost nearly a one time thing with these ones. They're going to get shot really easily. Because. The thing is with Rome 2, most units have some sort of Javi variant, and elephants are very, very vulnerable to Javis, especially these ones, with like this Lama. So, uh, and there you go, fire arrows coming in, and they're going to go berserk soon, these elephants. They may already have, they have already, and they're going to charge through all of these Praetorians and uh, Shota Warriors. It's such a big win for the defenders here. And, I mean, when they're in Rampage, elephants do do damage to friendly units. It's uh, So it's, like, always a good idea to try and get them to go Rampage in their own uh, units. And you can see here, these units are uh, just getting destroyed. These Praetorians are, like, in no fit shape now. And these Armour Show Warriors are looking a bit better, but they're getting destroyed by their own elephants. And, uh, yeah. I mean, they're now fighting us, which uh, obviously is kind of, like, the aim of the elephants. But, well... We've done the damage. We've forced them back. We've delayed them again. That's all I can say, really. We're going to take out this elephant unit, probably. They're starting to drop now. And there you go. They're charging the back into the Praetorians. I mean, I can't complain about that. And they may kill the elephants, because that is an ability as well. If they just get too out of control and they're compromising your army too much, you just kill them. And like, look at that. That poor elephant there just charged through 
Well, I see poor Elephant. That Elephant just charged through all of those Shota Warriors. And we've taken the offensive. These Maribor Guard have taken the offensive, as have the Kyothorax. We now have Desert Cohort here. And yeah, we're going to try and take the fight to them. They've not got much here in the way of things. And these Desert Cohort are probably the Fairly, fairly good match. And we've pushed off uh, the top of the slope. And we're now at the bottom, the other side of the slope. We're bringing the fight to Rome. We really are. Rome's... N he's still got quite a lot of forces, but... A lot of them are already engaged. He's not got many reserves, I should say. He's got, like, Triaria. He's got some gladiators. He's got some Praetorians over here. A really... Well, the lowest here Praetorian. Most of his other stuff's, like, engaged. We've got Praetorians here that have snuck around. Getting chopped down by... Nabate and Axe Warriors. And these Axe Warriors have been so key to us. Like these, their Javis have just been excellent and really, really key. And there we go. It looks like they're uh, basically cleared up of those Praetorians. How are the elephants? How are the elephants doing? Should probably keep an eye on them because they're not going to survive much longer. They're down to four elephants. And, uh, I mean, they are now fighting mainly the Thorax and these uh, Marib Royal Guard. But, I mean, they're still doing a lot more damage, I think, to their own Praetorians. They're, they're starting to pull through. But whenever they pull through, look, you can see, well, not pull through, but, like, push through the line. They then just become very, very vulnerable to Arch and they're getting shot to pieces. And there we go. That's the final elephant. It's Duke. Look at that. It's Goliath versus uh, David versus Goliath. And uh, I guess David won, sort of, again, with the help of many other Davids with bows. Um, so, yeah, those Sabian archers, actually, they're not great. They are not great. Um, and they definitely would have been dealt with. If they just sent up some archers, they could have shot those uh, archers to death and saved their elephants. But those Sabian archers have basically saved this front line and killed all the elephants. And we've now made our offensive at the bottom of this hill, and uh, it was kind of a bad mistake, I think. I would say it was kind of a bad mistake. We should have stayed at the top of that hill, and we did a lot more damage and frustrated Rome. But we've come off the top, and we've come into Rome's hands a little bit. With the support of these slingers and these archers, we've done a lot. Uh, well, I've lost my thorax here, and I mean, Numidia has got through his uh, infantry, though. He's snuck through infantry here, that gap, and he's going to try and take this tower. I don't know why. He was just insisting on taking this tower. Um, it's not going to do much damage. Not as much damage as these, that cavalry charge will have done. There's a lot of knocked over uh, cohorts there. And, uh, oh, I do apologize. Now it's just a big old fight in the uh, this choke point here between Praetorians and cohorts. But, I mean, nearly every front is still being fought for at this point. Uh, I think Kush has kind of given up on this front. Oh, my gosh. Maybe not. I take it back. We have Thorax Swords here pushing in. What is going on here? We have, like, cavalry all over the place. So, I think at this point we were sending cavalry around to try and, like, flank around here. I don't know. We'll just use it to lure these ar uh, these units in so that we can shoot them with their archers. But, I mean, yeah, my Thorax now are kind of the... Uh, the thin blue line that are holding, uh, that are holding back this uh, show tool force, and we'll just get rid of the shrubbery so we can see this fight going on. Kind of looks really weird now when they don't have their uh, leaves on, but yeah, you can see here when the trees don't have leaves on, it looks so weird. But um, yeah, the thorax just about won that. I think with the support of those archers, they did really well there. So we'll bring back the foliage. There we go. And now we've got some uh, Rakeem Palace Guard that are going to take over this front line. I mean, they don't need to. They can just we've got some picked hoplites here that are just holding in a thinner choke point as well. Like, they're sending up lots of the Rakeem Guard. There's no need to have it here. We've got one unit of picked hoplites that are just holding the line. And we've got the Silver Thorax are still alive. And they're going to fall back anyway, these Shota Warriors. They, they've realized that this is just not a viable way to come up now. Though, if they kept try, trying it, we would run, we're running out of ammo soon. But it just means we can use our ammo elsewhere. And here we go. I mean, they've got more th Shota Warriors here. 
flanking around. And uh, they're now getting cut off. And there we go. We've got Desert Cohort charging in. They didn't realize they were charging into pikes, so I don't think. But we really need to get some archers over here to focus down these pikes. Um, because this is the only faction now that has pikes. I'm pretty sure we took out... I don't actually know if Seleucid had any. He, I think he did, but I can't remember entirely. And then the, we've got Hippias in here. This kind of broke through from all the way around here. And it uh, did some damage. I mean, we should have sent it around here. And then it could have done a lot more damage and survived a lot longer. But it is trying to take out these archers. These archers are starting to become a bit of an issue for us. Rome's, well, Rome's archers are. Only archers being mobilized, really. And there you go. We sent the orders to get those Numidian riders back on their horses. We've got more Numidian no, uh, noble cavalry here. Still, we've still got plenty of cavalry hidden. Able to come and do some stuff. We've got plenty of infantry as well. But as you can see here, these are the two, well, the two, three main choke points we fought for. We've got the one over there at the bottom of the ridge. We've got this one here, which is actually not really being fought for at all now. This is a standstill. And this one's not really being fought for over either at the moment. The pikes are forcing back Numidia. But we are mobilizing some archers, I believe. Some mercenary Cretans are coming up. They might be out of ammo, though. But I think these, yes, we've got Sabian archers here getting ready. They're being given the order and they're going to fire in. Shoot these Kushites. And we've got a tiny unit of caravan guard. I think this might have been the unit that was fighting the uh, Praetorians all that time ago. And yeah, look at that. In the sky, they can just see all the arrows coming down. And the birds just in the sky as well. And the, it looks a lovely day for a battle though. All the clouds going, the blue sky clouds. Lovely, lovely day for a battle. Perfect weather. And these uh, Desert Cohort now holding line against the Shoto Warriors. I'm going to say the Shoto Warriors would win because the armor piercing is so nasty. And uh, look at this. New Minion Royal uh, Noble Cavalry. I don't know if this is the fresh unit or just another bad unit. This, I think, was trying to go off the general. And it's it's not succeeded. We'll put it like that. It has not succeeded. Um, it got wasted by like all the Praetorians here. And that was just a bit of a shame. I, or maybe, I don't know. Or did they go after the... I think they might have gone after the archers and then the general came in support. I don't know. But it got destroyed, that unit of uh, cavalry. Put it like that. And the gladiators are now in there. The slaves of the Colosseum have been sent in to fight for Rome. And then we've got more Myra Royal Guard going in. I think we're trying to withdraw as much as possible now. Rome is just going to win this choke point here. We can't really afford to send more and more in. But we're resetting up the line. We've got pick top lights here ready. We're going to hold at the old choke point where we did so well. And we've got lots of skirmishes ready. And we should be able to hold here for quite a while. And we're going to get some of these uh, other skirmishes and Myra Guard back. So we should do just fine. And there you go. That pike unit did break. 62 men it broke at. What's this guy doing up here? He just... What are you going to do? Flank round? Oh, that guy just fell off. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay, so units, if they get have no room, they get forced up there, and then they, like, fall down after a little time. That's kind of funny. But we have the legions of Rome fighting their trainees, because I'm pretty... Like, I got told by, in the comments, uh, in one of the past battles that uh, New Media... Or Mercedes they fe featured in that, uh, like Rome, uh, as sort of payment for like Numidia changing sides during the uh, Punic Wars to fight Carthage, that they trained some of their uh, some of their troops to fight like the legions of Rome. So they built their own uh, cohorts. So that's kind of how they come about, and this unit's like in in the roster, I guess. So that's kind of cool. I like that. And uh, here we got some tiny little units of uh, Numidian riders here. They're gonna go around. And we've got, uh, oh yes, there you go, the Numidian Noble Cavalry here in behind. It's now looking for good options to go after. Like Roman generals or Kushite generals or archers. But, I mean, Kush is very aware of it. He's still got a good uh, rear guard over here. He's got 
the other general, which is a bit risky. He's also got shows of warriors here. But yeah, he's got plenty ready. And we've got... I mean, this was a flank fought for at one point. Um, I, it's not being fought for anymore. But there was, yeah, cataphract here that died trying to get around here. And, um... Well, yeah, this flank's kind of become a bit... A bit... Well, dead, put it like that. There's not much going on here. And here we go. So it looks like they've decided with New Media to fall back to here. They're going to just javy this unit of show tools to death. It's not a bad idea, but the show tools, I'm sure, will respond. It's like a courtyard of death. You come in here, you're going to get attacked by the Desert Legions. Yeah, they do, they do look tired, depleted. I mean, these Romans... Uh, well, I mean, this is it for Rome. He's got one unit over here. I mean, this is really it. He's going to have to throw a lot of units into this choke point to try and break through this pick top plights and all of these uh, heavy new medium skirmishes. Because they're pretty good. I mean, this is light, light missile infantry, but they'll fight okay in combat. Especially when supported with uh, like an elite unit like the pick top plights. They'll fight okay. They might not get many kills, but they'll hold the line for a long time. And here we go. We've got Praetorians going in. Or no. And there you go. Okay, so Rome's general is now being taken out by uh, the new medium noble cavalry. We kind of missed it, but it is being slowly taken out. And Rome's not realized, or he's realized, and he's AFK. I don't know, but he's he's not AFK. We thought he was AFK, so he surely must have realized it. He would have got the notification our general's under attack. But uh, no, he didn't. Clearly, a. Uh, Either get it or realize or whatever, and his generals, is, the Roman generals, getting no support here, because we thought he's AFK, but he's sending up, he's like doing the movements up here in this uh, ledge. He's sending up slingers and all sorts, and he's just letting his general body go. He's got like a tiny unit here of Praetorian guards. Send them back to save your men, or even better, just send back all these Praetorians here. But no, he's just going to let his general try and hold this fight. And these New Indian Noble Cavalry are good. They're really, really good. They're a missile cav unit, but they'll fight hard. The Roman generals nothing nothing special. Neither of the units are uh, the Legatusora general and bodyguard. Either one you bring, you he's still very vulnerable. He's great for low tier battles possibly, because he's uh, like a heavy unit or he's a medium. He's well, this one's medium. I think the Legatus might be heavy, but uh, in like a high tier one, like any cavalry would just beat him. And there you go. The Roman general I think has died now. Yeah. I think the Roman general is dead. Recently died. So Rome is, uh, well, at risk. And now Numidian just does not care. He's going after this, uh, these archers. And I mean, his Numidian riders got in here and snuck in. And here we go. In they go. And you do not realize what a big win this was for us. Rome's archers were so annoying. They were frustrating the hell out of us on this flank. And it was kind of the only reason why we were having to fall back on that front line. Uh, on, the, like, on the ledge. But now we could be as offensive as we wanted. And yeah. These new medium cavalry are just going to get kills after kills after kills. And they can just go after all these archers. They need to take every single one of them out. And there's more up here. These slingers are up here. We've got more uh, Syrians up here. But they don't look like they're firing. I mean, I think these archers are out of ammo. The slingers still have ammo. But it's not a great angle for them. And we've got Thorax up here as well. We've got a solid line here for... Made by Athens, I'll hold this line. It's only fine, Triarii. Triarii is a good unit, but it's uh, not great on the offensive. It's great, like, doing what the picked hotlights are doing, holding the line. And look at this corridor of Praetorians. And he's uh, Rome said in his general, or what's left of his general unit, just because there's no risk of it dying, of the general dying now, because he's already dead. And we're starting to take the offensive a little bit down some of these uh, corridors. And uh, maybe to our downfall. We shouldn't be so aggressive, possibly. We're still not out of the uh, out of the dark here. I mean, balance of power is still really even. I'd say still in favor of the attack just slightly. But we seem to be pulling, like, little victories out of the bag here and there. Taking out the Roman general. Taking out Rome's archers. And uh, small little victories like that will hopefully build to a bigger one. But, I mean, at the same time, Rome and Kush are just grinding down our... Um, ever dwindling infantry units. So 
So yeah, I mean that that front's uh, almost finished. We've got more pikes from up here. Anytime Kush sent pikes up, we were just like, right, archers, we need them here. Pikes coming up. I mean, the three of the players in this were really, really good. I mean, they're some of the uh, th the players I play with most regularly, and they're just, their call outs are so great, and they did allow us to have a pretty good, effective defense. And uh, obviously, holding these choke points is going to make it so much easier for micro. You're not doing as much like moving around. I think the most micro being done was in the back lines by the cavalry. Um, obviously, here you can see these new really noble cavalry have got out of here with pretty f healthy numbers. I mean, if they wanted, they have even the option of charging into the back of all these uh, these guys here. I mean, these gladiators won't pose much of a threat. Or they could charge into the back of the Praetorians here. Try and uh, do some hammer and anvil. I mean, the uh, an the uh, anvil's already set up. I was about to call them the hammer, and then I was like, no, that's completely wrong. But you can see here, uh, the Romans are trying to desperately get through with a bit of Kush. A bit of Kush support. They're trying to get through. But I mean, we are very sure. I think Mercedes almost has mobilized almost everything. He's just got his general left. Um, but he has already fought out here. His units were pretty dead. And you can see here, this is like the devastation. We can try and get... Yeah, you can sort of see like the square here, if you follow my cursor, like of where they tried to hold on. It's just... I mean, there's a higher concentration on that side of dead bodies, but uh, yeah, it is a mess. And uh, I mean, yeah, well, this is where Seleucid died. The credit is a Seleucid player. I think he might have left by this point, but he'd been around watching for a while to see how it was going to go. And he realized that it was going to be a grind fest. And he was like, I'm just going to go because I have no purpose here. And it's just like, oh, I kind of felt a bit bad. I was like, oh, we've got no purpose. It sounds so awful. But he did at this point. He had nothing left. We'd annihilated his entire army very effectively. And here we go, the Rakeem, Ka the Rakeem Palace Guard, jeez, I butchered that the first time. The Rakeem Palace Guard of Nabatea holding it. We've got a mix of uh, normal Praetorians, you can see here with the white feather, a little more the Republican style, I think they're supposed to be, or the early period. And then we've got the uh, Praetorian Guard with their red plumes they're holding. I mean, this is it, this is Rome committing, this is, that's him, done, really. He's got like one more unit over here, still holding a Praetorian Guard. And then everything else on the wall, on the wall, on the slopes now fighting. I mean, and uh, here we go. It looks like uh, Mercedes is not really happy to charge in here against his gladiators. I mean, they're pretty elite. They are, have got a silver chevron, but they're a sword unit. And they're lightly armored. I mean, even though they say heavy in melee infantry, they're lightly armored. You could probably take them out. I mean, there is an overwhelming... F I mean, they're going to have to send them in soon. These triari are losing. Um, and the gladiators are going to have either no choice. They're going to get surrounded one way or another. And Kush, I'm surprised, has not stopped. Like, blocked this off. And this off just to stop like new media getting in. I mean, this area here, there's no point committing troops over here. But Kush might just want to just stop like new media coming down these uh, roads and just being an issue. I know it does mean he's got to dedicate a couple of units to like defend it, or he could just put his general there. Um, but why not? Why wouldn't you re um, want to just deny avenues of attack? And here we go. We've got. I've got some mercenary Thracians I've been waiting to use for ages. They've been kept very far back. Um, down like at the back in the reserves because obviously they've got no real shield so they get uh, javied obviously quite easy or shot by uh, infantry but I'm looking at this little force here and I'm thinking could I take this out could we take the offensive to Kush could we push them down box them in possibly in this corridor which is what I was thinking once Rome was finished and I mean I mean Rome's actually falling back he's making having a general retreat is he going to fall back and then make one more assault I don't know but I mean there's the artillery firing for uh, Mercedesly, he might need would want to get that really close and shoot at point blank range. Also save some ammo for late game. I don't know if the other two have. But yeah, I mean these uh, Praetorians falling back now. Don't know where he's really going with it. Maybe he's going to come back up here onto the slope. But we can now push off the slope. We have a lot of forces here, and uh, we might as well take the offensive to to Rome a bit. And Kush is mobilizing forces as well. He's going to send some armor shows us over. He's clearly, uh, ever, they're clearly preparing something, expecting us to attack. 
And Sab has now got his general in behind as well. I forgot to add that. Sab has got his general here. And at this point, I send forward some mercenary treated archers here. In the front line, just to start shooting this uh, general here. And he's starting to lose troops. He's down to 17. I don't think he's dead yet. Could be wrong, but I don't think he's dead. But if he doesn't move, he's going to get shot to pieces. So you need to keep an eye on that. He left them so close to the front lines, I was like, it's just begging to be shot. And saving archers here now, uh, shooting into the front lines. Here, trying to take out some more armoured shotels. They just seem to endlessly co keep coming. Here we go, the Thracians are on the move. The Thracians are on the move. And with their big, nasty two-handed swords, they're cutting down shotels like they are corn. and uh, Or wheat, I should say, not corn. Um... But yeah, these guys are just no match. I mean, they're pretty weakened units. But I mean, they have very little armor themselves. And now they're, uh, their armor-piercing effect for the show to warriors is just no use. I mean, they're throwing jabbies, which is one of the best ways that they're going to kill these guys. But it does not matter. I've got some pick top lights ready as well. And I think I was trying to coordinate this with the Sabah General to try and do some stuff. But Sabah's General is uh, kind of a little bit late to the party. I was hoping more... Uh, more Shotels might be committed to this choke point, and then I could just kind of plug them up here in this gap. And there you go, another unit is being committed, in fact. They realise that they're not going to break through. And these uh, Thracian Warriors winning decisively, or slightly at this point. And with the help of the uh, pick top plates, they're going to do just fine in here. I'm going to pull out the Thracians. And we're going to use them again. They're a shock infantry unit, you've got to nourish them. You've got to look after them. And I think that unit's broken. Oh no, it's falling back. And I'm going to follow on with the pick top lights. I think. They seem to stop all of a sudden there. And they're sort of fine, but they're sort of not. Um, Saber's general still looking for stuff. There you go, another Kushite general taken out. And they were not paying attention. They left, left him at the back here, and he got all of, I he got taken. Oh no, this is the same Kushite general um, that we were trying to shoot here to pieces. But uh, yeah, the other one is still very healthy and alive, it would seem. So there you go, half of I don't know. Yeah, Kush has now lost a general. One of the Kushite armies has lost a general. I don't know which one it is um, because they seem to have their armies intermingled. But you were having an issue here. I clearly sent this unit like on on its own. I did not realize that it had been sent on in. Um, and I must have given it an order to attack. And then, uh, well, basically, it's got surrounded. Uh, we're now dashing lots of forces to try and take it on. And, uh, well, yeah, this is kind of what Rome's wanted for ages. Just to fight in this courtyard, get some easy flanks. And uh, now we're going to get the noble cavalry to come and do some hammer and anvil. But, I mean, these guys should break soon. The Romans, even if they're Praetorians, should break soon. They are, without a general, they're tired. It's more Kush coming up to support that I'm a bit worried about. But the gladiators returning. And, I mean, I think the cavalry's about to arrive. We've got Thorax swords appearing as well. Throw some jabbies into the side of those gladiators. That was nasty. These poor gladiators are uh, regretting joining actual combat and not just fighting in the Colosseum. And there you go, the cavalry gone in. And now the Kushai uh, Shota Warriors now trying to fight them off. And I'm now going to go in to support like that front there with the thorax so the uh, cavalry can get out. And there you go, the cavalry's going to go hammer and anvil into the back. Now it's ping-ponging off everything. It's going into the armor shotels here. A push needs to come from Nabatea and I mean, Mercedes doing it. But they just need to keep attacking everywhere. Just surround everything. This cav is just constantly just running around. It's doing as much damage as it can possibly with charges. And these Thorax won't hold for long. Thorax are not great against armor show tools. And there you go. In go the uh, Praetorians. They're going to surround these guys. And I was like, right, if they're going to surround us, we'll surround you. And in go the uh, pick top plights and the Rakeem Palace Guard. And they'll surround the Praetorians. And that's kind of just... The Praetorians kind of just made their own grave there. I mean, they are going to possibly take out that Thorax Sword, but we're going to take out two Praetorian Guards. And we can flank around here, and we should really do the, that exact thing. But we've not we've literally got nothing. 
nothing to flank around with. I mean, maybe these Rakeem Palace Guard could flank around. But uh, everything's really committed into there. And it's going to become a grind just to take out these Shota Warriors. Absolute grind. And we're starting to look low on reinforcements. Or on just genuine reserves. And uh, yeah, my Thracians kind of went around this way. Come and flank. And they're now fighting an entire unit of Armour Shota Warriors. And uh, yeah, they're getting pretty beaten up. Their big swords are no longer doing the damage that they used to. They clearly blunted them. You've been taking out so much armor that you blunted these guys. These swords. Oh, the, the, the guy with the lion head just got a kill. You should be worried when he gets a kill. He's got another one there. I mean, they, he was in fairness running away. But yeah, that armor showed to warrior unit. Lost two men to that show to, uh, to the Thracians there. I was so frustrated. I was really wanting those uh, Thracians to get more kills. I think they only got like 80 odd kills. In the end, uh, yeah, 85 kills. I was really hoping they'd get a few more. They're not expensive. It's just it's a really good shock infantry unit. And uh, yeah, you can see these uh, pick top lights starting to lose. And I'm probably going to lose this flank now. We're now mobilizing all of our archers to uh, get a bit closer. Because this slope, they're just not attacking anymore. And they've not attacked for a long time. And you can see here, with, we're coming down to the final stages. Kush is all that's left. Rome's got a tiny unit of Praetorians, but uh, he's basically finished. And we're trying to... I was egging on the uh, two generals, Masesli and Saba. Just go, have a go. Go and take out this Kushite Royal General. I think Masesli's still got a few jabbies left on his cav. So he can certainly get a few jabbies off into this general first. But it is a risk. It is a risk. And that's what we were really gunning for over here. We're trying to take out this front. Force the general out of his uh, nice little hidey hole. And uh, really get into some combat, possibly. Risk him, because that's what we're going to need. We're going to need another general kill. There's so many show to warriors left. And archers, they've hardly used any archer ammo up. You can see here these uh, Kushite archers now taking fire. Oh, not taking fire. Uh, taking aim, I should say. Not taking fire. Jeez. So, so many shooters, and then the Praetorians just keep coming back. Uh, but at this point, now I think we started to open fire with. I think we've got an artillery piece somewhere knocking about. Yeah, here we go. An Eastern Onager. Uh, most of the other ones have been finished, abandoned. I'm pretty sure they're. Uh, use all their ammo, which is a shame. We could really do a getting one really close just to like, take out as much of these guys as possible. There you go, hit there. Uh, you kind of missed it. There's a big hole where the uh, unit was, but we're taking out these Kushite pikes. I don't know if we're taking out any of our own units. It's not really a significant blob, but you can see. Look at all the bodies that have come here. All the fighting that's happening in this one choke point. You can see Athenians, Nabataeans, Sabians, and a lot of Kushites. And I mean, and they, they just keep coming to these uh, Shotels. I think they're trying to take out uh, generals. Yeah, they're down to 64 men now. It's come to that point where we're trying to general snipe. Which I think is a valid tactic at this point. Um, there's no other way we can win, I don't think. Without getting this general dead. Or oh, we're going to need a bit of a miracle. Because, well, this flank's now free. Uh, all of these units here are freed up. They don't need to go around here. We're using what remains of our general units uh, to hold this flank. Which we really should have done to start. We shouldn't have... I think we were a bit too offensive. Um, and we probably could have done with maybe falling back. I mean, you could fall back to this one point here. I mean, this is then the cap point, but you can fall back to these stairs and just hold that and get archers ready. But we would need to stretch Kush out as much as possible, which I think. And we get some Rodian Slingers now coming up. These guys are almost like full ammo. And uh, I was like, right, we're going to try and get these guys to take out the Kushite archers. Try and give these uh, forces a bit of relief. Let's have a volley. And yeah, they're kind of just f throwing over there. This is so annoying. I really wish I would uh could bring another unit of archers because uh, slingers are really hard to use. You need to almost get them on a building and get them like with a good overview uh, shot. But yeah, we've got another general coming around here. Armored Numidian Rider. He's coming around. Don't know where he's going exactly. But they're just. The Sab I mean, I think the Sabbath general's dead now as well. I think he got charged in here and he got killed and he went into some other charge somewhere else. And uh, Oh no, he's there. No, he's there. Sabbath General's alive. I think. Yeah, he's alive. I couldn't see him for a long time, but he's he's still alive. He did do a charge there, though. 
Um, they went to test to see whether this unit had a uh, any javies left. And, uh, well, obviously the dead horses explain that they, they do have javies. Um, but, yeah, if they were going to... I think they should. They were going to try and cycle charge this unit and uh, try and get to the archers inside. Because that's what they really need to take out. If we can get these archers, then we're, and we're inside the formation then. And then show to warriors have to get turned around and uh, forced from the front line. And then we can attack them and we just that was kind of the idea we we're going for like we could push from the front lines if they're having to fall to troops back and they may lure the general into a fight but uh no right now that they not fancying it and we, i mean we're still trying to take out these archers with uh, with artillery it's just never going to be a good trade because you only take out about two or three archers for every volley of artillery especially if you're manly firing you can see here we're going to win this fight but so many archers being like used, just picking off all our units now. They've done well in saving their ammo for late, late game. But you can as Kush, because you're just going to kill so many anyway with these goddamn nasty units. I just enjoy watching like front lines battle it out. Just watch as like the men struggle. You just like keep, pick up one or two like guys and just watch as a. Uh, they struggle or like die or get some kills. It's always a struggle in the front line. You're getting pressed from behind by your comrades and you're getting pressed from the front by the opposing side. Be very claustrophobic. But yeah, I mean, this side's basically being held up by a weakened uh, Rakim Palace Guard, some picked hot plights, and some Numidian skirmishes. It's a. Uh, it's going to be close. It is going to be close. It is the balance power is in favour of Kush. He's got so many swords left. But here we go. We're going to make an offensive now. We see that the archers are open. They're ready for the taking. It's when we needed the cavalry over here, really. We desperately needed the cavalry here. And I mean, there you go. Oh, yeah. That's the charge I was talking of. Saba sends in his cavalry. And uh, it goes from like a unit of 50 down to 32. Such a waste. There you go. That was the charge I was meaning. It was a little bit early. I kind of spoiled that for you. I do apologize. But uh, yeah, so they get in an armor show to worry. It's going to take out some Creed and archers. We really need to flank it round here, get flank the unit round. But I mean, they've still got plenty of reserves, so flanking's not even going to do much. We, but yeah, like I said, we just need the cavalry. Extra pace would have got into that arch line so much quicker. Because now look at this. They're just decimating. This is probably our biggest, like, one of our biggest grouping of forces here. We've got, like, fresh picked top plights. We've got Maribor, God, which is still a healthy 70 men, it's still fairly healthy. Got loads of archers and stuff. And uh, yeah, we just can't really break through because of all these archers. And I mean, this is another area here. Big grouping of forces. We've got the Navitaean general and we've got the Athenian general. Both some solid units trying to get through. I mean, this unit is actually winning decisively. How? It's just how. Yeah, I mean, it's slightly, not decisively actually. But still, it's probably because of all the archers. Uh, it's more than definitely the reason, but I mean, we're sending forward the uh, artillery here. But this is it. We were almost... We're, we're drained of forces now. Everything is in, apart from the artillery crew, which is still has ammo. And over here, I mean, this is the weakest flank. They could definitely send one more unit in. They, this is good night, Vienna, for this side. The pick top lights are just too few in number, and they're losing decisively. And then we've got the uh, only the skirmishers remaining. But uh, yeah, I think at this point I send around my Rodian Singer, which I really should have done about five, six minutes ago. Send this guy around, and I'm going to set him up here, and he's going to shoot down the street at the uh, general, which I really should have done so much earlier. Um, but hey, at least uh, I'm thinking of it now, not like after the battle, and we go, oh, I should have done that. But, I mean, definitely one thing I'd change about doing is I, we wouldn't have attacked off, like, into here. We just kept holding here and on this bit here. Frustrate them. Or even just hold here at this choke point. And frustrate them. The Romans, that is. Um, maybe not have done so many silly attacks down here as well. We came in with, like, the Thracians was a bit of a risky one. But it, I, you've got to take risks in, the, in these games. And, uh, end of the day, I think... There's so much you could have done differently, but at the same time, you're just fighting an army of, like, Kushites uh, units. I mean, we were actually, we were beating that unit there, but we're actually going to lose now. 
because I sent this unit in. These picked up lights stuck in behind here, and they're now firing another unit. And I'm desperately trying to gonna disengage there. And I'm gonna try and engage uh, the Praetorians and then the Kushite Royal Guard here. And I'm just desperately trying to go for a chain route, but I think it's unlikely. I mean, you can see here the Rakeem Palace Guard are gone. My general is gone. We're down to the bare minimum, and we're seeing a bit of a chain route here now uh, from Mercedes Lee, who's lost almost everything. He's still got his general left somehow. But yeah, here we go. These Rodian Slingers now. I've got to do some work. They're now going to throw some javies. Well, not javies. Um, throw some stones. And yeah, I'm at, you can see the rear. You can see those the pick top lights are uh, going to charge in the back of the uh, cav. And I'm like, right, we'll take out a few of these guys. And actually eggs them on. Sends them towards the slingers. Which is actually not really what I wanted them to do. But hey. Uh, we then fire our slingers in. And uh, I mean, these ones are going to get in there. Get in amongst them. But then the rest of the cavalry has been slowed down by the pick top plights. Come on, kill these cavalry. And then we can start firing again. Kill the cavalry. They're only mere... Uh, but yeah, you can see here, winning slightly. These guys are winning. They're actually killing these Kushite Royal General off. There is still hope. This general may die. Um, he's losing. And he's shaken but not stirred. But there you go. There's the main force. Still winning. How is this possible? You do. I do question it myself. My pick top lights desperately trying to get through. They're being surrounded. I'm, I kind of pulled through, but I didn't realize I was... Desperately trying to look at the uh, coach, like get the slingers to do the work. And there you go. We take out the general for uh, Kush. We get all of the generals, uh, which I guess is a small victory. But I don't think the Kazir balance power has not changed it. And now the slingers are going to get their uh, just re just reward of being cut down by the uh, show warriors. What they get for taking out a Kushite royal general in the air. These guys have no armor. Even with no armor, these guys are uh, like... The show tells you just do well. I mean, it's archers, I guess, in fairness. They're taking out all slingers. They should be more precise. But yeah, that is going to wrap up the battle. Um, really, the artillery over here kind of just fired down like point blank range at a load of these guys as well. <laughs> Poor uh, show tells. But yeah, it was a costly enemy victory uh, for Kush. And well, it was really Kush. Kush took the day. The Seleucids got killed off very quickly. And Rome didn't uh, live to see the end of the battle. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, well done to uh, Dodgy and to Aiden and to Coops, who also played him. I'll leave a link to Dodgy Gobbs' channel again. I've done it a few times, but uh, definitely go and check him out. Uh, definitely worth uh, having a look. He does also some uh, Rome 2 stuff on his channel as well, so definitely worth checking out. But uh, I'll have a look at our, uh, well, my army first. I'll say our army. You, you guys weren't playing, <laughs> but you, you are watching. Um, but yeah, my general only got 25 kills, mainly focused on by those archers. The cavalry, the hippies, lances at the beginning of the battle, getting 165 kills. Not too bad for them. Uh, we've got the Cretan archers here, getting 156, 166 best one. These Rhodians getting 94 kills at the end of the battle. Uh, the Thracian warriors, as I already mentioned, 85 kills. The best one of the pick top plates getting 199 kills, which is okay. Um, and my Thorax swords getting, I think the best one getting 132. These other ones are definitely could have done better. 14 certainly could have done better. Uh, Dodgy, he was playing as Nabatea. His uh, general gets 67 kills. Again, focused down by artillery. He's easy on to get 164 kills, so not too shabby. Uh, one of his armor camel spears, only getting 7 kills. I definitely could see that doing better because they're quite expensive. Uh, his cavalry is getting 309 kills. Excellent. Another one getting 284. His noble cavalry getting 99 kills and 60 and 85. His heavy archer getting 209 kills, um, which is the best one. Uh, the other one's getting... Uh, well into the hundreds. And then his uh, best Axe Warrior unit getting 124. And his uh, Rakeem Palace Guard getting 169. The best one there. So well done to him. And then uh, Mercedesley, uh, who's played by Aiden. 196 kills with his general. His armored, uh, armored, I've heard him armored Chotel. Armored Numidian Riders, 196 kills. His African Orange getting 275 kills. His, uh, another one of his Numidian Royal... Uh, a noble cavalry getting 100, 345 kills, but that one I think they got mainly archers, but still can't take it away from them. they did really well. Um, his Numidian Riders getting 129 kills, good amount of kills for that unit. His uh, skirmish is getting 258 kills, I think it's one of the highest I've ever seen uh, that unit get. And then all the others getting into the hundreds. 
Uh, his desert uh, cohort, most of them doing like well, getting over 100. This one, the best one here, getting 208. Then Coops, who was uh, playing Sabbath, 231 uh, kills with his Onager. I think all of them got over 200 kills. Oh no, Dodge didn't. Um, but I mean, Aiden and Coops both getting over 200 kills with their Onagers, so well done to them. Um, his Arabian Cav, kind of a bit of a throwaway Cav unit, um, did their best. They did, got some kills. His general getting 79 kills. Um, kind of just got destroyed by the Javis at the end there. His Cataphracts getting 112 kills and his uh, Mar Royal Marab Cavalry getting 130. And his Sabian Archers, they're not great, but they got 157 kills. Um, and his best Marab Royal Guard, I think, got 183 kills and his only his Mercenary one getting 141. And then we'll have a look at the attackers, the Ever Chosen, who's playing as one of the Kush armies. I think he might have been the main Kush army at the end there. Um, had His archers is okay, getting like just 90 kills, but I mean, these are pretty average archers. They, they could do better. Obviously, Armored Chotel is doing great as always. The best one here getting 324, another one getting 306. A couple of those getting to the 200s. Uh, 348 even, that's an even better one. So well done to him. His Pike's in 202 kills, and his Shota Warriors getting 122. Then toasted toast uh, person. For unfortunately for him, had a rough game. Uh, none of his uh, two of his units got into the hundreds. No three. Um, all silver shields. I think he should have brought uh, royal peltas. They do a bit better, and they got more javis. So he got 108 kills, 155, 160. Um, but yeah, he had a rough, rough game, and you can see they got the lowest amount of kills out of any of the players. Um, just getting into the thousands. And we've got Tyler McKee, uh, who's the other Kush player. Um, he got 457 kills with that uh, Armour Show to Warrior unit. Again, these units are just nasty. Got another one there with 404, 344. Um, and then his Show to Warrior is only getting 133, the best one. And then we have uh, EYDM25 playing as a Rome. Only getting 38 kills with his elephants, not really worth bringing at all. His uh, Sokiai Equites getting 113, which is actually okay for them. Um, his Syrian Archers getting 155, which is pretty average for them. His Gladiators getting 108, I'm not really sure if that's good or bad. Rarely see Gladiators on the battlefield. His Praetorian Guard getting 131. Uh, you got some others actually. Actually, 131 is one of the lowest scores I've just seen there. You've got 366, 238, some 190s here. And then his uh, triar I mean, his basic Praetorian only getting 64, and his Triaria only getting 97. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you, some of you got to the end here. It was a long, long battle, uh, but it was definitely worth it. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a sub to show your, um, and a comment to show your support. And uh, thank you again for all the support recently. Let's keep it up, guys. And until next time, Legionnaires, bye for now.